Hello everyone, welcome to skadia.com. My name is Hira Imran and today in the radiology series we will talk about chronic shoulder pain. So uh, let's start. So in today's lecture we will talk about the different uh, chronic conditions of shoulder and how they interrupt uh, the shoulder function and how to diagnose them on radiographs. So there are multiple uh, chronic conditions of the shoulder. First, we will talk about shoulder impingement. Impingement is something uh, when two structures are pressing something in between them. So we'll talk about how different structures can be oppressed or pinched between uh, the anatomical structures of the shoulder joint. Uh, like a chromion, uh, because of some anatomical variations, can impinge uh, uh, rotator cuff tendons or the bursas or the muscles. So we will discuss that in detail. Then we will talk about arthritis, which is the uh, degenerative joint disease. Uh, there are different types of uh, arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis being the common. Others are uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, psoriatic arthritis, but uh, we will see how they appear on radiographs. Then we will talk about uh, acromioclavicular joint, uh, again degenerative joint disease, which is uh, also known as osteoarthritis. So we will discuss the osteoarthritis when it involves the acromioclavicular joint. And when acromioclavicular joint uh, is uh, degenerated or there are degenerative changes taking place in that, um, in that joint, Mostly the superior and the anterior surface is uh, extremely painful, uh, especially in overhead activities, and we will discuss uh, many different features of this uh, degenerative uh, disease in detail. And we will talk about glenohumeral joint, uh, uh, degenerative joint disease. So it's also uh, known as osteoarthritis of the uh, glenohumeral joint. So what happens is that in this uh, osteoarthritis, the pain is mostly on the lateral aspect of the shoulder and the superior aspect of the shoulder. So we will discuss this in detail and how it appears on radiographs as well. Then we will talk about rotator cuff tears. So rotator cuff uh, is made up of four muscles. Uh, it is the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the subscapularis, and teres minor. We'll see how, uh, if they are ruptured, how they appear on radiographs. So the attachment site of these rotator cuff tendons is the uh, uh, greater tubercle of the humerus. So if there is any um, lesion or fracture of the greater tubercle, there is rotator cuff tear. A very important thing to note here is that rotator cuff actually is responsible for aligning uh, the, uh, the humeral head in the glenoid cavity. If there is uh, a rotator cuff tear, there is, um, trans uh, there is displacement of the entire humerus head uh, superiorly because of the excessive pull of deltoid muscle. So rotator cuff tendons or the muscles keep the uh, keep in check the pull of deltoid. So if there is rotator cuff tear, there is excessive pull of the deltoid and the humerus head uh, displaces from its uh, glenoid cavity at attachment. So we will discuss that in detail and see how that appears on radiographs. So we will also talk about how proximal bicep tendon tear uh, appears on radiograph. So the attachment site of the bicep tendon, the long head, which is mostly responsible for uh, uh, all the uh, bicep tears, mostly uh, the bicep tears are to the long head of bicep, which attaches to the superior surface of the glenoid labrum. So labrum is uh, the structure that deepens the glenoid cavity. So when the glenoid cavity deepens because of labrum, the superior surface is the attachment site for the long head of bicep. And we will see how if the bicep tendon is teared, how, uh, how it appears on radiographs. So we will also talk about avascular necrosis. So avascular necrosis is actually death of the bone due to uh, cessation of blood flow to the bone or the nutrients uh, to the bone, and we will talk about avascular necrosis in sense of humeral head, and how uh, the uh, degenerative changes take place as, uh, as a consequence to cessation of blood and nutrients. 
<clears throat> then we will talk about soft tissue masses, how they appear on radiographs. So uh, uh, soft tissue masses can be cancerous. They can be, uh, they can be uh, lipomas, which are fat cells. So we will talk about that in detail as well. All through this entire lecture, we will uh, talk about every uh, disease or lesion and see how that appears on uh, the radiograph. So that will be the interpretation of all the uh, conditions. And that is going to be the end of uh, the uh, lecture on shoulder, chronic shoulder conditions. So I hope that uh, you want to watch the, the lecture in detail and uh, keep watching the video on scotty.com for a detailed lecture.